Hello and welcome back to Switch X and also Rage Gaming. My name is Olo and I released a video all about Switch X builds for OG Sunbreak about a month ago. In update one, Switch X has been able to grow in power thanks to things like this with a new weapon augmentation for sharpness or how you can find more comfy skills like power prolonger and evade extender in the armor crafting side of things. That gives us more space to put straight damage into the builds resulting in even better DPS output. Not to forget that new skill, Element Exploit, which works great Great with element file switch axes, which yeah, we mainly use in the builds today. As you can tell from that reasoning and the solid numbers in the general gameplay footage today, we're hitting pretty damn hard and this is very fun to play. Before we get into the build though, there's two things I want to mention. First, a disclaimer for this video. There's always going to be a technical best switch axe based on whatever monster you're fighting in its specific hit zones, but this video is to give you a main build based on the five weapons that an average player will benefit from massively. Keeping it nice and simple, I will be showing you five switch switch axes today and a build that works really well with each of them, along with advice for your augments, your armor crafting, and of course the rampage decorations. I'd like to also thank Josh for all the help with the builds in this video. We worked together to come to these conclusions. We had a big back and forth for this video, so credit to him for all the help. I'd also like to give a shout out to Fox Invictus, who dropped some very good details in the comments of my original switch axe build for Sunbreak. Fox also creates fantastic videos for switch axe in general, be it speedruns or extremely detailed math breakdowns for the advanced information side of Switch X. If you're interested in that at all, please check out Fox's channel. Lastly, I want to give a congratulations to Kage, or is that pronounced Cage, who joined Team Darkseid recently. I've been watching their Switch X speedruns to learn how to play the weapon, and this person, they're a machine. I really recommend their videos if you want to watch some speedruns. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the builds at last. To begin the build, I want to talk about a couple of key aspects of Switch X you need to understand. Switch X has bonus damage tied to which vial type you're running. Power vial and element vials are the kings in Sunbreak. Four of the five weapons I'll talk about today are element vial weapons, which all benefit nicely from that new skill, element exploit. This triggers when attacking a monster part with an element weakness of 20 or higher, but this skill isn't so relevant for a power vial switch axe, which benefits more from raw power, so a bit of crit boost is in that build instead. Therefore, we have a setup for your element vial weapons and a setup for your power vial weapons. Another aspect of switch axe in Sunbreak is that purple sharpness will increase your damage by 39% compared to 32 from white. This is a massive increase on a heavy hitting weapon like this, so we require it. This leads to us putting handicraft and protective polish as a vital part of our builds, letting us achieve purple sharpness and then maintain it throughout the fight. As you'll see in this video, the new weapon augment system of Curious Crafting, well that allows us to get some extra weapon sharpness and that frees up a decoration slot previously used for handicraft. We begin with our main armor set, which features element exploit of course. This is the set you'll be using most element file switch axes for. As you can see, the helmet is the Malzanos, we have the silver Rathalos chest piece, the golden Rathian gloves, the final boss's waist, and Malzano boots once again. This leaves us with a lot of really, really nice slots. That plus our decorations, talisman, and hopefully curious crafting will lead to a nice... <laughs> Big list of skills, as you can see. Seven out of seven attack boost is incredible. We want five of the current element we're using and its attack. Three out of three witness exploits, super important. Protective polish, three out of three, that's gonna give us our sharpness maintenance. Speed sharpening to get that going even faster. Rapid morph being vital to any switch X build. Chain crit, just increasing our damage greatly. This time we have handicraft at two levels instead of three. Three levels is required to actually reach purple sharpness with many of these weapons, but we're only using two because we're now able to augment our weapon to give us sharpness, freeing up a slot. The second page not too relevant, just little bonuses or things we're getting from our armor and the element exploit on the third page. To achieve these levels though, as you can see, I am decorating like this. Attack jewel in the weapon, attack jewel in the helm and the sharp jewel for the protective polish one level. In the chest piece, we have the sharp jewel plus four to get us the rest of protective polish. There's one of our handicraft jewels. We only have two, the bonus grinder. There's the other handicraft jewel in the gloves and very importantly, one level of rapid morph in the gloves as well. The other two levels of rapid morph come from the new decoration in this patch, Quick Switch Jewel plus four, which goes into the waist. And then we have the boots with our element attack and of course that attack jewel. Now a quick word on the talisman. As you can see, I've done pretty well with this one. Three levels of attack boost and then the decoration slots of one, one, one. With this, I'm able to go from four attack to seven. Four attack is gonna be your minimum for the build. You want to achieve that at least. The levels up to seven are nice bonuses and you cap out at seven, so that's ideal. I'm seeing speedrunners use cheated in talismans to get the 
they're god talismans and they're similar to this three attack boost and either two weakness exploit or something like crit boost or even crit eye and then they have the three one one slots so while this talisman is certainly not a god talisman and is attainable i acknowledge that it's still pretty damn good if you could get yourself an attack boost of one or two levels or maybe even better slots to just slot in some attack boost that could do the job or you could use a different talisman entirely you could get something like protective polish like that one we could get three levels of rapid morph and then an incredible four slot talisman like that one or another with rapid morph three out of three with some uh, alternative decoration slots the point is you want to rework the core skills based on what talisman you have and what slots are in it and just achieve the main list of skills that i've shown you but in that list was two skills that you're going to be wondering about that i need to acknowledge power prolonger and evade extender both of these are considered comfy skills but one level of power prolonger and one level of evade extender is considered by most absolutely vital and i agree i want one power prolonger and i want one evade extender in this build i am willing to lose damage and drop an attack jewel or something like that to get those but you don't have to do it that way you can keep all the damage that i've just shown you and then use curious armor crafting to get those skills as they're common skills you could actually roll them in the augmenting state or you could do what i've just done and roll a handicraft. So now I can take this unnecessary handicraft jewel and turn it into an enhancer, giving me two levels of power prolonger. Or I could put it into a jumping jewel, giving me two levels of evade extender. It's up to you. However you work this in through curious crafting on your armor, that's the way to do it. But then when it comes to power vial switch X's, we need a slightly different setup since we're not using element exploit anymore and instead grabbing some crit boost instead. So for that, we use the Almadron helm, the final boss chest, Malzano's gloves, the final boss's waist again, and then death stench boots. I'm also using the same talisman and the same principles apply here when you're using talismans. Ultimately this results in 3 out of 3 critical boost as well as the other skills you've seen in the build already. Once again though you want to work in evade extender at least level 1 if that's something that you will benefit from which I'm sure you will. And we do that through curious crafting. But just so you can see at least in the video these are the slots that I have and what's currently in it. I will explain rampage decorations soon. The last thing I need to talk about in regards to equipment then is of course dereliction. That's skill that drains your health over time but gives you extra power in return. A lot of people hate this skill because it's very invasive on the gameplay. A lot of people really like it because hey more damage and they can put up with the health. So we just have to acknowledge it in this video. If you want to run Dereliction then you should take either of these builds that I've shown you and replace the legs. Putting in the final boss legs which will give you that Dereliction you need and then a 3-2-2 slots for the decorations. Using those decoration slots you then recover the skills you've lost as best you can as well as curious crafting the armor to recover the skills but that's as simple as we can put it next up then it's time to talk weapons but before i do that i did mention i'd talk about decorations switch x has three choices to make if you have a three slot then you're going to be choosing between ellen bane switcher or an anti-specific monster like anti-aquatic or whatever it is you're actually going to go against of course if you only have a two slot then you should be running one of those anti-specifics now in the case of ellen bane this only works when the enemy has a weakness element weakness of 25 or higher and you can hit it often, like the main target you hit. Take Teostra here. He actually does have a element weak zone of 25 or higher, so it would work against him. The problem is, how much are you actually hitting his forelegs? I'm hitting his face the most of all. I could try to hit the forelegs as much as possible, but it's always a bit uncertain. So generally, it's more optimal to get the anti-specific uh, monster type in that kind of scenario. Meanwhile, with something like Pyrachna Kadaki, we have the claws you can attack or the head, which might be more viable for Ellen Bane. It's just something you need to check and decide for yourself. Meanwhile, the Switcher Jewel is great for power vile switch axes. It's this really comfy skill that's going to make generally playing the weapon easier and also make your morph attack stronger, so better DPS when you're doing the ground combo. I always like to run Switcher with a power vile switch axe, but you could still argue for the anti-specific even then. All right, let's begin with the weapons then at last. Starting with the fire switch axe, I still recommend the Magmadron tree, 320 raw, purple sharpness with a little bit of handicraft, 78 fire element, and it's got three slot for both the decorations and the rampage. As an elemental vile weapon, this is fantastic. With this, we will of course use our element vile build, which brings me to an acknowledgement finally of weapon crafting the augmentation. As I've said, with the fire, the water, and the dragon switch axes in this video, you should be using this. Two handicraft is in the build, right? So you need to get one level of sharpness boost 
boost from your augmentation. That is exactly what we've done here. So we got the sharpness to reach purple sharpness. Then with the remaining slots, the two slots, I've used elemental boost because that's worth more in this elemental vial build than just straight attack boost. Much like the fire setup for the water setup, we're using the Almadron tree. Once again, we use the same augmentations I've just shown you. They're very comparable weapons, which is very nice. For our dragon switch axe then, it is still the death stench, which is just incredible. 330 attack, 60 dragon, and two two slots for its actual decorations. It's ridiculous. This is a fantastic switch axe, which we will once again augment for sharpness and then two element. Now for our thunder switch axe, it's an awkward one. The Nawa tree remains really good. It needs just one level of handicraft to actually reach the purple sharpness, unlike the other weapons which means we have to change the build slightly to accommodate for that. It also has no basic decoration slots. So again, that forces a change. Because we only need the one handicraft level to actually reach purple sharpness, I put it in the chest piece. So while we do lose the slot in the weapon, we also recover a slot. So we end up still having attack boost seven out of seven and the same skills that we had before. And since we do not need to augment for sharpness, that frees up some extra damage in the augmenting. So when you're doing crafting on your weapon with this one, augment three element and then get one attack. It's not a major change, but an effective one. Now it's time for our last weapon, the ice weapon of choice. This is Kushala's switch axe. As you can see, this does not require any handicraft to actually get purple sharpness, which frees up a lot of handicraft slots as well as our weapon augmentation again which is a good thing because it only comes with a one slot for its weapon slots but much the same when you augment this weapon we'll go for three element and two attack in this as i said i'll be using the switcher rampage decoration and of course we'll be using our power vial setup as i've shown you earlier but now we've reached the very important mass section of the video. So we can assign a sort of DPS value to the weapon combined with the armor set. I'll be comparing it to the original build too to show how we've actually gained both raw and element damage in this update. As a note though, things not included in this math are the weapon specific stuff. Like say the element vial of the weapon versus power vial, the RNG potential of extra skills you might get from armor crafting like crit eye or the rampage decorations. So let's compare directly and use the Magmadron switch checks for the math example again. Stack with the raw, which begins at 320. We're getting plus 10 from attack 7, and we're getting plus 15 when 3 chain crits active. So that puts us up to 345. We're also getting 10% attack from having 7 attack. So 345 times 1.1 brings us to 379.5. We also have purple sharpness. That's going to increase our damage by 39%. So 379.5 times 1.39. That's 527.505. We'll always try to attack a weak point, won't we? So our weakness exploit is active. That's 50% affinity. And with this build in the element vial, we only have the one crit boost. So we're doing plus 30% damage 50% of the time. That's a 15% increase on the damage. So 527.505 times 1.15. That brings us to 606.63075. So let's round that up to a nice 607. Not bad, but now we have the element damage to consider, which starts at a very impressive 78 with this weapon. We're getting plus four from having element attack five. We're getting plus six from our element boost augment in this case, plus 12 from chain crit, bringing us to a nice round number of 100. We also get an element increase of 20% from having fire attack five in this case. So 100 times 1.2, that's 120. Once again, we have purple sharpness for element. That's a 25% increase on the damage. So 120 times 1.25, that's 150. Now with this build, we're also using element exploit. That's a 10% increase. So 150 times 1.1 is 165. Lastly, we have our affinity and we do have one crit element just because of uh, what we have on the build. It's not a massive increase that it's 5% extra element damage half of the time. It's a 2.5% increase. So 165 times 1.025 is 169.125, aka 169 when rounded down. So our final numbers are a raw attack of 607 and an element of 169 when combining this set with the Magmadron switch axe. That is very impressive. When we consider what the numbers were in the original patch, our old raw was 562 and our old element was 146. So we've gained 45 raw attack and 23 element attack. Very good. So in conclusion, thanks to the possibilities of the new four slot decorations we have in game now, we can now fit things in like protective polish and rapid morph even easier into the build. 
will, which of course leads to more damage potential. Not to mention things like the augments of our weapons for sharpness or extra comfy skills without sacrifice like Evade Extender, freeing up even more space as well. So overall, this has been a fantastic update for Switch X, be it for the power or the convenience of the weapon. We've done really well in update one. If you have any extra advice or details to consider for Switch X gameplay and builds, please do drop them in the comments. But I hope this updated version of my original Switch X build has been good and clearer. If it was and it's been helpful to you, then please do drop a like on the video. These videos take a lot of work, so it would really be nice of you to do that. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye